One driver is locked into the truck championship race at Phoenix. Keith McGee is all gas, no brakes, and we got to talk about Fox. Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. Some of you might not be aware that there was a NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series race on Friday afternoon at 4.30 p.m., well, 4.50 technically p.m. East Coast time. The NASCAR Truck Series went green from Talladega, a rare Friday afternoon, early evening race like it was Dover from years gone by. The truck race started at 4.50 uh, when much of the country was still at work. I mean, if you're on the West Coast, you're talking about a 1.50 p.m. start time and nobody was going to be able to watch. But Talladega, of course, doesn't have lights and college football exists on Saturday now. So running a double header uh, up into a TV window, which FS1 and Fox want to use for college football just wasn't going to work. So we got the ever rare Friday afternoon, late afternoon, early evening start for the truck series. And we'll get into Fox in a second. I'm not going to complain about Fox. I'm not going to do it. I'm not complaining about Fox. Yeah, I'm complaining about Fox. So I'm going to get into it in a minute. But Grant Infinger, he wins on Friday afternoon, evening, for the Truck Series at Talladega. He locks himself into the Championship 4 race at Phoenix. The Truck Series playoff is a little bit more fractured than the Cup Series. Uh, they only have three races left on their schedule. And now after Talladega, that would be Homestead, Martinsville, and then the Championship race at Phoenix. Grant Infinger is now locked into that Championship race already. Grant Infinger also becomes the first playoff driver in the elimination era, so 2016 to now to lock himself in via a win at Talladega. Pretty interesting stat uh, there. So Enfinger gets to race for a championship with that CR7 team, that Cody Robar team. Uh, they've had speed all year. And like Grant said, yeah, this is a Speedway win. And obviously some people will try to discredit it. But for the most part, they've done really well. And they've had speed at a lot of tracks. They probably should have maybe a win or two this year if things go their way. On Friday afternoon, they did go his way. He went to victory lane. Alabama native picked up his 11th career uh, truck series win. Now he's a shot at a title in a year where I don't think people thought he had a shot at a title. Uh, as the points currently stand, uh, Corey Heim is plus 30 over the cutoff line. Christian Eck is, is plus 29 to the cutoff and Ty Majeski is plus five over the cutoff. Um, uh, that means that uh, Raja Kruth is minus five uh, to the cutoff as it stands. Uh, Heim and Eck is those two guys have a, you know, a, a good homestead score, some stage points. They can probably get themselves to a really comfortable position heading into Martinsville. Uh, that last transfer spot, though, could be very much up in the air uh, as you have Majeski, who is really good at Homestead and he's really good at Martinsville. We'll race Raja Carruth, who, of course, won on a mile and a half earlier this year. And can't forget Taylor Gray um, is out there and Tyler Ankrum is out there as well uh, as contenders to try to you know make it into this uh, championship race in Phoenix. The truck race on Friday, though, a few complaints, and I'm not going to try to complain the entire time here. I went and did the Bart Simpson on the chalkboard before this, and I said, I'm not going to complain about Fox. I'm not going to complain about Fox. I'm not going to complain about Fox. Uh, will that hold true? Stay tuned, because it's not. The truck series race, though, started off fine. Ben Rhodes, uh, it was like he was playing the Chiefs out there. He was getting penalty after penalty, and he couldn't do anything right. He gets a start violation, and then pits for that. Doesn't speed on pit road. Okay, easy part's over. Now I got to just get back onto the racetrack. NASCAR hits him with a blend violation because he blended up into turn one, and you're supposed to blend off of the exit of turn two. Unfortunate for him. Then he has to come back in, serve the penalty, gets caught up in a wreck. Just bad year for, for Ben Rhodes. My One of my complaints about this truck series race, not the fact that it started at 4.50 on a Friday afternoon when a lot of people, even on the East Coast, aren't going to be able to watch it. Uh, my biggest complaint is the fact that the stages here are so, so short. I mean, stage two was, I believe, a total of 12 laps. Could, be, could have been 13 laps. For the most part, though, it is so frustratingly short, the stages, uh, the first two are. Then the you know the third stage is about like 40 laps long or a touch over 40 uh, at that. So that part is frustrating. Matt Mills wins stage number one. Great for him after last week um, in Kansas deciding to just turn right in the middle of the backstretch and take out Corey Day. Uh, Matt Mills also believed that he was the only driver on track once again on Friday when he turned not clear and caused an accident as well. Speaking of accidents, Nick Sanchez actually was caught up in that accident, but in front of it. So like it all happened at the same time. So it wasn't technically uh, the Matt Mills wreck, but Sanchez spins 
um, gets turned sideways. And for a wreck at Talladega, it was slow, boring, and not that bad, all things considered. Spins in the trioval. Uh, Connor Zilich runs into the side of him, T-bones him. Not the worst damage that we've ever seen for the two truck. For the seven truck, it wasn't great. But then behind him, uh, you know, Ben Rhodes is stuck up against the wall with Chase Purdy. Bad bad result there. Um, at some point, Daniel Dye had a grasshopper in the truck with him uh, from the radio that I heard. Uh, it does sound like he was able to set the grasshopper free. Did he survive getting let go out of the out of the race truck? Uh, that's up in the air. I They are resilient little creatures, so hopefully he's good. Um, he did apparently hang around for the first stage, so he got the ride of his life, even though he's a grasshopper and probably doesn't know what's happening. In stage two, we had some more incidents as well. Lane Riggs had the opportunity to send Jake Garcia and rocket him to Huntsville, Alabama, if he wanted to. Garcia threw this like Scott Pruitt fade type of block down the backstretch. And listen, you can do that to an extent, but like if Lane just holds his line, Jake Garcia is going for a ride. And then ultimately the two of them actually did end up crashing into each other, but not because of contact that started it. It was just a chain reaction that sent Lane Riggs into the wall and Jake Garcia as well. That was a pretty big incident. Corey Heim snuck through there. Um, uh, it was not the worst accident we've ever seen, but it definitely got Tyler Ankrum and a couple other contenders in it, but they were all able to survive and continue on to race. As Fox is interviewing Jake Garcia, and for the first time, I think a lot of people discovered what Jake Garcia looks like, uh, another wreck happens. Nick Sanchez, again, he's racing for the lead, uh, gets a bump from Christian Eck, is going into turn two. That sends him down to the apron. He comes back up on the racetrack, and then cars scatter, cars spin out, uh, and as they're doing that, the Fox camera is shooting from behind, as you can see in the clip right here, shooting from behind, and then they cut to a camera in the corner, and the camera operator zooms out, and then zooms back in, and you can just kinda see Sanchez going up the racetrack from behind the catch fence and the campers there, and missed the entire accident live. It was super frustrating. It just exemplifies what Fox's coverage has been for the truck series, uh, just in that one simple clip right there. Uh, talking to Jake Garcia, a guy that, no offense to Jake Garcia, we probably didn't need to talk to, at least not a picture in picture like that, misses an accident, well, catches it, and then cuts, misses it, zooms out, zooms back in, uh, still has this distant, everything about it was just bad. In that accident, though, uh, Keith McGee, who failed to qualify on, then bought the number 28 FDN racing truck, he then is out there, and apparently he's all gas, no brakes. He would be perfect for the ARCA series. I might implore him to go down and race in the ARCA series because he came flying in well after this wreck had already happened and just absolutely clobbered the number 21 truck like with the Demolition Derby. There's no place for that here. I don't know if the guy doesn't know where the brake pedal is. I He has to have a spotter. If that spotter is a mute, they might want to go ahead and take a look at that because there's no reason he should have gone into that accident as quickly as he did but he did it. He was out there driving like Helen Keller, Alabama native, if she actually did exist, and just sailed off into that 21 truck and annihilated him. And after that, we had a pretty decent battle. We had a couple of, uh, um, we had some green flag pit stops, which saw Daniel Dye miss because I believe he didn't get called to pit road in time. Uh, then we had an accident happen, kind of brings the field back together. And then on the last lap of the race, they're coming to the checker flag. You have uh, Tyler Ankrum on the outside, Daniel Dye pushing him. They're trying to make up ground in the top 10 here. Dye's trying to push Ankrum, his teammate, so that he can score more points. Unfortunately, Taylor Gray was in front of him. Daniel Dye is pushing the 18 truck of Tyler Ankrum. Uh, essentially lifts up Ankrum. Can't really see that the uh, 17 in front has uh, checked up a little bit. That happens. The 18 goes spinning. Unfortunate situation there. Big wreck at the end. The 43 of die gets a ton of damage. Uh, but Grand Finger wins uh, the race. Taylor Gray comes home second. A great result for him as he's still in this championship hunt as well. Daniel Dye in third. And Tyler Ankrum was kind of left there, you know, as the victim in this whole circumstance. But super speedway racing, it's unfortunate that they wreck, you know, trucks every single time we go there or even cars at that for that matter. But Grand Finger wins, locks himself in. Listen, we have to talk about Fox. I know. I said I'm not going to complain about Fox, but like John Mulaney said, I am because I'm a liar in the situation here. 
it was bad. It was bad. The coverage has been bad for some time now. And a Friday afternoon race, when not many people are watching, is if you want to have a bad race, that's when you can have a bad race. Except we've been continually having bad races. Thankfully, Jamie Little wasn't on the call, but Michael Waltrip was apparently calling things a lap behind everyone else. Keep in mind, the booth is not at the racetrack. They're at a uh, uh, studio in Charlotte. Um, I know a lot of people seem to think that the monitors set up behind them are windows. They are not. Um, I've never seen the earth shift and move like that before. So yeah, no, they're in a studio in Charlotte. They're calling these races remotely and it just seems like there's no cohesion there. Come, even though they've been calling races for a while, they're missing things that are happening on track. They should have a wall of monitors there with multiple different camera angles. And it really feels like they don't have that. And it's frustrating. And then you get the type of camera work that we got for the Nick Sanchez wreck. That was bad. You have the, the running order getting mixed up and then the constant, constant commercials. We get it. We get it. You need to have commercials to pay for it. But man, even in side by side, the big a big accident happened and they stayed at commercial for two minutes as we're watching it in the small box right there. They near had the wreck cleaned up and back to racing by the time we came back from commercial. But good thing we got to see the Fox Sports football commercial followed up by the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series on Fox commercial before finally going back. Feels like those are commercials we could probably cut out. We don't need to have a commercial about what we're watching when something is actually interesting happening. Come back and talk about it there. Now, I know there's protocols to how all this is done, and there's certainly directors that are calling things and producers that are doing, uh, you know, you have to make good. NASCAR paid for this placement. You know, Fox Sports paid for this placement or whatever. You want to do this promotion for, uh, you know, your own broadcast but man was it bad on friday and it hasn't gotten any better uh, obviously next year for the first like 14 races of the cup season so first 14 weeks uh however many truck series races fall in that time period they'll be at the track so that's a plus but then for the second half of the year we're just going to be stuck with this remote booth again and jamie little great pit reporter terrible at being a lead announcer i hope they don't have her come back eric brennan from the cars tour would be a phenomenal get for them if adam alexander uh, ends up leaving fox to go over and call uh extended races on the cw they gotta do something over there because the coverage is bad the booth has no cohesion anymore uh people just seem to be out to lunch and it's really frustrating because you want to see a good product we tune into the truck series to watch the truck series and we're being given a subpar product it seems like more often than not but doesn't matter grand and finger headed to phoenix uh for the championship race Three spots left, two races to go. Homestead, Martinsville. Let me know in the comments what you thought of today's race. Fox, Keith McGee, not knowing where the, where the brake pedal is. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at BreakHardBlog.